join me with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good evening and welcome to the Hampton Board of Selectmen's meeting for June 4th. Do we have uh, public comment? Anybody in the public to speak? Good evening, Betty. Over there. Um, Betty, Betty Moore, 375 Ocean Boulevard. And I'm here tonight um, in my capacity as director of the Historical Society to talk to you about an event that's going to be happening there on July 14th from noon to 4 p.m. Um, as we're going to celebrate uh, Hampton's 380th birthday. So it's a mini celebration, but we figured some of us won't be around for the 400th. So um, what we're gonna do that day is we're gonna have some tours of the museum, videos, demonstrations. And what I'd like to do tonight is invite other groups and organizations to join us for that day. Uh, they could have a table, they could um, uh, talk about what they do, uh, they could do demonstrations, they could do things with kids, it's pretty much open. We just wanna make it um, a, a day of celebration and pretty low key. Uh, we have Vikings that are coming that day, we have a weaver, we have a duck, right now a duck decoy uh, demonstration we're going to have some antique cars, some food. Um, so if people would like to participate by joining us as an organization that day, they can call the museum at 929-0781 or leave a message on our email address. And just to kind of get the date out to the public to think about it and stick it on their calendar, because I know it's going to be a lot of fun. We have all kinds of things planned. So I hope people can join us, and thank you. Yes, the date again? It is uh, Saturday, July 14th from noon to 4 p.m. Okay. Mm -hmm. Anyone? Put the Santa Claus in it. Yeah. <laughs> yes, sir. Hi, everybody. I'm Jay Diener at 206 Woodland Road in Hampton. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm here on behalf of the uh, Seacoast, I'm sorry, the Seabrook Hamptons Estuary Alliance. Um, and also the New Hampshire Coastal Program. Uh, we have been speaking with people in Hampton for a number of months who are experiencing flooding issues, as has the Conservation Commission. And what we've been finding is that a lot of people have issues, have problems, and are really not sure about where to go or where to turn or what to do. So we're putting together a series of workshops that <coughs> excuse me, will hopefully provide them with some basic information on what is causing the flooding, how to assess what their risks are, things that they can do themselves, uh, various bigger projects that they may want to consider like raising their houses, uh, different types of shoreland um, projects that they can take on to help protect their, their property, be it soft shorelines or armored shorelines, dealing with flood insurance issues, uh, should you have it, shouldn't you have it, how to apply for it, what questions to ask, um, what to what information to have available when you're fly, uh, applying for a claim. So what we wanna do, and this will be a series of three workshops, is provide a good sound basis, a broad basis of information so that people can make better informed decisions when they're addressing flooding at their properties. Uh, let me give you these two. Pass around if you would, thank you, Jan. The, um, the first of these workshops will be on June 19th. Uh, they're all gonna be at the Masonic Lodge at 77 Tide Mill Road. Um, they start at six, they'll go for about two hours and we'll include a light dinner. Um, we ask people to register, but there is no fee to attend these workshops and, and they're open to all coastal residents as well as municipal officials. It, it's a problem that everybody has that we all share and, and um, I think we're all looking for ways that we can help to solve these problems with on our properties. So we, like I said, we're hoping that these can provide some basic information that people can use. Um, and so I hope everybody will come. What's the, what's the date again, just so you can? The first one is June 19th, the second is July 17th, the third is August 21st. You have a board upstairs with the 
We have a board upstairs. There are flyers in town hall. Um, there'll be a poster in the library. Um, if people have questions, they're welcome to call me. My office number is 758-1177. Um, and again, um, you know, this is open to everybody. We think it's something that will serve a real need in our communities. Um, and so we just want to get the word out and get people to know about it. It's a great idea. I signed up today to go into it with a friend of mine. Mary Louise, you had a question for me? Okay. We don't usually take I questions, but this is... You're going to have instructions on building an arc? Um, we'll have diagrams. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I don't think so. I actually have one question, too, because yep. I was going to bring this up, actually. but And then there's another meeting that I got an email from Deb uh, Bobo about... Hold on one second here. It's... Uh, there was one on July tw June twentieth, the New Hampshire Coastal Adaptation Work Group. Right, that's a that's a climate workshop that's going to be held at the Great Bay Discovery Center in Greenland. And she said she's going to be presenting. She Hampton's is. Hampton's case, or uh, is that one what? of the presentations is going to be Deb Barbo, who is a Hampton Beach resident, uh, Rayanne Dion, who is our conservation coordinator. And uh, a guy named Chris Jacobs, you may have heard of, the head of DPW. Okay. And they're going to be <laughs> also there addressing some of the issues of flooding in Hampton and, and some of the solutions that Hampton has come up with for that. So that also is going to be a very good uh, conference. And that's June 20th at the Great Bay Discovery Center. Thanks, Jay, very much. Gee, you mentioned his name and he walked right in, so that's pretty good. <laughs> he must have heard me. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Thank everybody. You, Thank you. Anybody else from the fog want to speak? Yes, Brian. Good evening, uh, Brian Mills from Aquarium on Water. This is my final, well, maybe not my final pitch. Uh, <laughs> this Thursday evening, uh, Aquarium is hosting their annual uh, Environmental Champion Awards. The event, if you've been to it in the past, this is gonna be a totally different, still just as fun. But uh, Thursday evening, six to eight p.m. at Victoria's Inn here in Hampton. Uh, this year, the event is just solely focused on the seacoast. Uh, in the past, they've taken nominees for these awards from all over the state. So, you know, we're bringing more of a local focus. Uh, the folks, everyone at this table up here, certainly, and, and the public, but certainly you folks have been important partners with uh, Aquarian over the last, how many years? Certainly over the last several months, we worked very closely together. We'd love a really strong showing from Hampton. We've gotten RSVPs from uh, local officials, some folks on this board, Northampton, the district councilor, uh, we're going to have U.S. Senate staff there. Um, we're going to have some of your town staff there. They have RSVP'd. So I, I, we're looking to have a – it's not going to be a huge event. It's pretty intimate. And we're, we're running it. It's almost – it's basically a reception. So this is not the four-hour rubber chicken. <laughs> you're, you're trapped in there for four hours. It's basically cocktails at a, at a beautiful venue with some appetizers. And then the categories are there will be a student, uh, ninth through 12th grade, that will get an award. Um, a local business, a local nonprofit, and then an individual who's shown, you know, some giving, you know, their efforts towards air, water, uh, soil, whatever, having to do with the environment. So we have nominees, a lot of them are local, and many of them are from Hampton. The nominees will all be there. Celebration of our Citizen Advisory Board. So uh, I am going to keep calling people who I haven't heard from, but I just wanted to make sure you all knew this publicly and uh, happy to answer any questions after the meeting or whenever. Just the date and the place. Thursday, June 7th, Victoria's Inn, 430 High Street here in Hampton. Thank you. Yes, sir. I just want to oh. tell you, that's also the night of the uh, Hampton Beach Area Commission. It is. So there will be you, people going there too. You, you, I've already run into that. Uh, it's also Senior Banquet Night. It's also Portsmouth City Council having something to do with Coakley night. It's, it's, it's the time of year. There's no good time to have an event like this, but you can make it. We won't feel bad. We won't be mad at you if you make it a drive-by event. Come in. We don't care. Come in, have a cocktail on us, have, have some appetizers, make an appearance, and then, you know, Aquarium Water corporate, corporate team will be there. Um, so there'll be a lot of folks, and uh, we want to make it as easy as possible because we know other people have other things going on. So thank you. Anybody else from the public want to speak? Announcements and community calendar. Mary Louise? Uh, bridges. This is it. In the 
latest legislative bulletin from the New Hampshire Municipal Association. Two items caught my eye. Number one, additional funds for municipal bridges. HB 1817 became a de facto supplemental budget bill, funding a variety of programs from anticipated surplus hmm, of approximately $100 million for the state fiscal year ending June 30th, 2018, reflecting a desire to use one-time money for one-time expenditures. Section 25 of the bill appropriates $20 million to the DOT for state red list bridge projects um, and $10.4 million for municipally owned high traffic volume bridge projects. It's anticipated that the additional funding for the municipal bridge aid program will have a ripple effect on other municipal bridge projects, freeing up funds to help move some projects sooner on the current waiting list. Most of you, I guess, are aware of the little <clears throat> problem with the Hampton Harbor Bridge last week, freezing in place, and the town was not notified, police were not notified, commissioners were not notified. I'm hoping, and Rick is on the HBAC, I'm hoping that the HBAC will really, really be lobbying for us to get that bridge, that harbor bridge, replaced and not wait till 2024. And the next item that I was notified. Huh? I was notified. Yeah. By my customers that couldn't get over it. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I mean, I had, I got a strange <laughs> email and I called, I called um, Chuck Rage. Commissioners hadn't been told. I called Nancy Stiles and as soon as we were done talking, she jumped in her car and drove down there. And by the way, she confirmed that the crosswalks have been painted on 1A. But uh, so I'm hoping the HBAC puts a lot more focus on that bridge. Second one that's really critical, cancer presumption for firefighters. The House and Senate conferees agreed to the House version of SB 541 relative to a presumption regarding cancer in firefighters for workers' compensation purposes with a few changes. Under the agreed version, the introductory paragraph of RSA 281A colon 17 Roman 2, creating a presumption that cancer in a firefighter is occupationally related, remains virtually unchanged. In two places, the House version addressed the availability of the presumption in someone who had been a firefighter for five years, and the conference committee raised that to 10 years, a new paragraph was added to the House version stating, quote, no active or retired firefighter shall receive the presumption benefit unless the employer voluntarily has in effect a policy that follows the Fire Standards and Training Commission curriculum requirement for best practices for use and cleaning of equipment. It remains unclear to us exactly what effect this language will have. Uh, when Chief Ayotte comes up, I want to touch on that a little further. But after losing our firefighter two years ago to cancer, I think this is something that needs to be on the front burner for all of us. Um, yeah, actually everyone stole my community events tonight. I'll be attending the uh, Thursday Aquarian event. I think any type of event that is trying to get community involvement is a good one. So I hope that it goes well for Aquarian. Um, on the bridge, I was actually at work that afternoon, it was about 3 o'clock, and I received an email from someone I knew that works down in the marina telling me that the bridge was stuck up. <laughs> so I'm like, okay. So I emailed Fred, and I told him that I was being told that the bridge is stuck, thinking that the communication of the bridge being stuck had already you know, gone through the normal process, but oh. apparently it hadn't. And Fred was the one, I take it, to notify everyone. Well, so we started the ball rolling. We started yeah. the ball rolling. <laughs> so what concerns me is the bridge, whatever, had an electrical issue, it was dealt with, that's fine. But that, if that is how 
the town found out, which almost sounds like an accident to me. Yeah. I have a real problem with that communication process. Well, my customer called me because the town of Seabrook sends a reverse 911 yep. to the okay. whole, every, every resident of Seabrook. Wow. So that's how she heard. So she knew to go around, and right. that's when she told me. Mm. Oh, that's that's inexcusable. The bridge. Yep. Is that what it's called, a reverse 911 or right. reverse something? Yeah, it's a reverse 911. Yeah. Jim? <coughs> uh, I just uh, hope people attend those three workshops on the flooding that uh, Jay talked about. That, that That's really important. It's really important for us. That's all I have. And I wanted to mention about the Hampton Area Commission is having uh, <clears throat> You know, the, I guess there'll be some decisions made on June 7th. Um, I believe there'll probably be a vote that night. Um, I think. I'm not really sure, but I, I you're believe right. so. And uh, so any, anyone that wants to go and has anything to say, they're more than invited to come and talk during a community comment. Where is it, Rick? Um, is it here? here? Yeah, it should be here. Uh, okay. Um, and um, I just wanted to say that uh, it was a nice uh, time for a Diana that her little retirement party at the uh, 401. Um, it was nice for Desi to do that. And uh, it was interesting to see some people there, uh, especially Karen that used to work here. Um, Anderson. Yeah, Karen Anderson. It was nice to see her. So. Thank you. The only thing I have is uh, I want to send out best wishes to uh, former selectman and present school board member, Ginny Bridal Russell, who is in the hospital. Uh, she is getting better, but we just send her our best wishes from this board. Yes. Okay. Next is approval of minutes. May 14th, non-public session. May 21st, non-public session. Mr. Chairman, I will so move. Second. Second by Jim. All those in favor? Unanimous. Consent agenda. We have cemetery Oops, deeds. You do. Oh, you're doing the non-public and I did public for both there was, the there 14th was, oh, and the 21st. I, yeah. Yeah, I saw that. All right. So we'll do the public sessions for the 14th and the 21st. I'll make the motion. Second. All those in favor? Unanimous. Thank you, Mary Louise. Okay. Uh, consent agenda. We have uh, cemetery deeds. We have consummate conservation commission alternate appointment. Anthony Chaffee. We have a hawkers and pedals license. We have a memorial bench at Lock Road Playground. We have a solicitation permit. And we have a Unitil gas line petition. But yeah, it would be so. nice if we spelled it gas instead of gal, but. Mine says gas. Mine says gas. Mine says G A L. Mm. Okay. Yeah. I move the consent agenda. Somebody correct. Second. Second. All those yeah. in favor? <coughs> Unanimous. Thank Chris you. Jacobs, oh, oh. DPW Director, and Jennifer Hale, DPW di direct, uh, Deputy Director. So we won't call her Deputy Dog either. <laughs> it's always fine. It's all good. <clears throat> call her a hard-working woman. That works as well. Good evening. Good evening. Thank you. Sir. Thank you, sir. Excellent. Thank you. Actually, Chris. So, um, yeah, this is the department update first, so I guess that's what we'll do. Um, try and go down through this quickly and succinctly for everyone. Um, I'm not aware of anyone retiring before the end of the year. We had a few last year. Um, one of our employees, Fletcher Proto, left uh, the town's employment after several years to go work in Portsmouth. Um, we do have four new hires. Dan Mellican is our new highway foreman. Many of you have met. Brian Bick, Philip Clark, and Jared Credo are uh, new laborers that we have. And uh, I know we're in the process of putting uh, two more on in the coming weeks and a number of people for the beach crew. Um, Josh Nersessian was... Uh, I guess it was a lateral transfer, but he uh, <clears throat> opened a uh, position, opened up in the wastewater treatment plant, and he signed up for it. And Mike Moran has taken over the carpenter's position. 
um, something he was eminently suited for, and um, that was the position vacated by uh, John O'Brien. And uh, Ryan Sharp has been promoted to the position of transfer station foreman in a reorganization for you folks earlier, and uh, officially he'll take over on the 13th, but uh, I know right now he's, he's already stepped in and, and doing uh, some of those things. Uh, with that, I'll turn it over to Jen. She can go down through and uh, read the section with respect to all of our major projects. All right, so Lafayette Road Sewer, as many of you may have seen, uh, last night they patched the trenches. Uh, this included Sanborn, uh, from Sanborn Canny up to Winnicunnet Road, the trench out onto Winnicunnet Road, and the trench along High Street. Uh, unfortunately, weather got us on our last night, so we will not be paving uh, this evening. Uh, but that is the last step, is the section between Winnicott and High Street. I'm sure many of you have seen that we've milled out to the sidelines, not all the way to the curb, this is what we've been saying, but to try to get that smooth surface uh, along the traveled way, and that will take us to the summer next year and into spring. Uh, but all the sewer work has been completed. It's all tested. It is all in working order. It is all online. Uh, so we are... Uh, looking to looking forward to letting uh, some normalcy get back uh, for everybody uh, in that corridor. Um, Mill Pond Dam, uh, we have taken down the trees that were required as part of the project. Uh, that was done last week. They have uh, provided their submittals. So our review engineer, or Engineering Consultant Park Corporation, is going through their submittals right now. And they'll be actively under construction within the next week or so. Uh, we continue to uh, work with our asset management software. Uh, this was purchased uh, through the grant process, I believe. Well, it was actually the uh, revolving loan process uh, two years ago, but we have all of our sewer and drain assets uploaded. We have our horizontal uh, wastewater treatment plant assets. We are using it as a work order system, and we are finding it to be very handy as far as being able to be attentive to our caller's needs, uh, being able to look back into work that has been requested to be done when it got completed. Uh, those great things, we're working on the reporting system um, so you can help more so we can track costs and those type of things. Uh, the temporary force main is obviously something that's been ongoing. I have it as a major project here because it takes a major part of our uh, time to coordinate, but we'll go through more of that in detail when I give you an update later. Uh, we've been working with Wright Pierce uh, to develop the scope and fee for the wastewater treatment facilities upgrade. We met uh, again last week with them. We are probably a meeting to our way uh, to present you the scope and uh, what we look uh, to do in milestones uh, as we complete 30, 60, and 90 uh, percent basic design drawings uh, for these upgrades. I keep Bicentennial Park on here just to remind you that we do have the full design construction plans. Um, it is something as we move forward to um, the CIP, the upcoming warrant process, the budget that uh, you know we'll be able to put that out to bid when uh, it is time to do so. And that's sort of a summary of the major projects that are ongoing. All right. Um, we did do something different this year. Uh, we had in our spring leaf collection we also uh, contracted with urban tree service and had them uh, collect and chip uh, brush and tree limbs that were brought curbside i just want to point out this was uh, just an additional effort that the department undertook um, it was not part of our regular budget it was not part of our regular scope of services um, but it was uh, talked about and discussed <coughs> internally uh, through Fred's office, and that uh, given the number of uh, March heavy snow events, yeah. it was probably the very prudent thing to do. Um, we were glad to do it. I just want to be clear that it's not it's not guaranteed each and every year. I'll put it that way. <laughs> Line painting. Um, I was able to move that up this year with Dan's uh, support. Um, we got in line early with uh, our uh, contractor. And um, I thought it was thought of as always been important that as the summer traffic increases, especially with respect to the crosswalks, uh, that those get done early in the year rather than let's say midsummer. Um, all again focused around safety. Um, 
tree removal, we have taken down uh, only 14 trees this spring. Um, there's eight large ones throughout the High Street Cemetery that are also under order to be taken down. Um, I have noted one or two others, but I'm going to wait for the contractor to catch up. Uh, flashing crosswalk signs, that's a project. Uh, Selectman Bridal uh, championed a number of years ago. I can finally say that I've caught up to his champion efforts and the one at between CVS and uh, Eddie's is uh, up and running. Um, and uh, the one at the uh, Best Western Hotel was damaged during the winter, but I know a new sign has been ordered. Uh, we'll get that installed as soon as it arrives. Uh, we're moving on to potholes and pavement repairs. Uh, now that all the uh, winter lawn damage has been done, uh, repaired, all the uh, ramps are out at the beach. Basically, that's what takes up the departments. Um, labor staff uh, earlier in the spring and that only ended uh, about uh, a week and a half two weeks ago basically Memorial Day weekend we had everything done for that so we are going to be moving on we uh, we ourselves ride uh, Lock Road and Molten Road we know what condition those are in um, we know they need to be paved or improved but also Lock Road's on the schedule for sewer replacements so we're trying to figure out a way to get all that done at the same time it's not uh, it's not always easy, and Ann's Lane is scheduled um, uh, for the end of the year construction this year. That was a holdover project from uh, well, actually last year. It was conceived the year before that. Um, under the sewer and drain division, uh, as you as it states here, there was a number of uh, winter events. Um, one of the things that I'm going to jump down is the video inspections and cleaning. Um, they've done so far over 163 uh, outfalls uh, and basins. Um, another thing that was completed was uh, we had to use an outside contractor, but there was 4,800 feet of uh, drainage and sewer lines on Falcon Circle. Uh, some of you may remember we had a um, sewer service that was connected to the drainage, and um, it was requested that we uh, verify through that whole neighborhood that that was the one and only occurrence and it was um, they've they found no other um, cross connections if you will we're also looking for a uh, leak somewhere in the huckleberry lane neighborhood um, we had uh, 550 feet of that drainage slash sewer lines inspected uh, and they continue to go around town cleaning and inspecting uh, under the repair section uh, call to your attention um, we've been down on Pearl Street and replaced a clean out and a, and a service down there. Um, the reason why it was uh, had to be repaired is it, f uh, it says it's filed due to construction, but it should be it failed due to yeah. uh, corrosion. Um, there again, there's a lot of uh, brackish water um, in that neighborhood, and um, that's what we feel. Uh, and looking at the pipe uh, led to its demise. Same thing up on Thompson Road. We had another one there that uh, was a uh, necessary repair. Um, we worked diligently with Dig Safe. Uh, it does take up a good amount of the sewer and drain department's <coughs> time, and they had uh, every time there's a call out for water or gas or other people doing other work, uh, we, we go around and paint up the streets. Green is their preferred color. Um, and as again, uh, Ann's Lane sewer work is uh, being uh, planned for this fall. Um, I did change up the report somewhat in that I've given you on the back uh, monthly uh, summations from the wastewater treatment plant staff. Uh, and just going to report here the, uh, the basis from it. The uh, overall wastewater amount in the first four months is... Um, up from uh, it was 317 as this as of this period a year ago it's up th to three four 340 million gallons so far this year but the wet sludge volume is down by 73 tons which is good because that relates to dollars and cents in the budget a direct real direct cost and the amount of septage is also down um, a whole 95,000 gallons um, that helps us out um, it's, it's lost revenue for the town because people do pay us for septage, but 
uh, while we're nursing the plan along and getting ready for the um, the repairs and the upgrades, it's good not to have to handle that intense of a, uh, of a load. Um, the transfer station, I don't have good numbers for you for the first quarter because we are in transition. Um, the uh, We do have monthly numbers, but they have not been tabulated to a spreadsheet. I'll give that to you in the next report. Um, we did do our annual report and that got off to the state in March. Um, the new compactor um, was installed. That was uh, encumbered funds as of last um, last year's budget um it's interesting to note that's the same the compactor that was replaced is the one that was in the plan originally since 94. Um, we had uh, welded it and replayed it a number of times but it was literally on its last leg uh and i know that because i've watched the last meeting rusty's uh brought you up to date people are noticing the additional signage the additional work that's being done uh by the uh the people at the transfer station um, and, and, it, and it shows it really does uh, repairs I did want to bring to the board's attention um, the vehicle maintenance staff uh, without really my ordering it or Jennifer ordering it took it upon themselves to um, take 90 truck 93 in and we had an estimate somewhere between ten and fifteen thousand, or ten to thirteen thousand dollars, to scrape, uh, treat the rust, and uh, paint the truck. And they've got it done for, in looking at some of the bills today, less than a thousand dollars between uh, bondo paint, things of that nature. I took a, a picture of it and put it in the truck. I've got to. They're working on another truck right now. It'll come out the same way. Uh, I bring it forward and tell you because I didn't want someone around town to think that we somehow got another new truck. And we, we didn't. We just <laughs> painted the Facelift. one we have. Yeah. yeah. You can actually see the difference in the color to the, the cab and the photo, how much it's faded, and the, uh, the new uh, yellow paint on the, on the body of the refuse truck. The two Mack trucks are on order. Uh, we've signed the purchase order for those. Um, they're offering us to take us down to Pennsylvania to see them assembled. Uh, they'll be here December 31st, uh, the very end of the year. And the last page actually shows kind of what the truck is going to look like. Uh, it's a standard stock image from Mac, uh, except the color will be yellow. And that concludes my report. report. Any questions? Mary Louise. Oh, yes, I do indeed, if you won't smile at me for one second. Um, First of all, I would like to um, request, as I, I've requested of fire, and I'll ask the police department as well, if you would be kind enough to provide copies of your report to the budget committee. Just stick the copies in the little slots upstairs in the, by the finance office. It's going to help tremendously this year, I think, if the budget committee can read this now mm -hmm. and follow you as you go through the year so that they're not going to be hit with everything at the end of October and try to read through what it, this this way is a great way to track I think what you're being done How and, many and what do you're they doing um, they are nine members of the can I say something about that because we were yeah. talking about copies the other day yeah. I think maybe if you just want to do four or five because I think most of the members would prefer to get it like an email oh but there's a few that do like the printout so i would only print out maybe like four or five okay I can, uh, i'll scan what we have together as a pdf document in the morning uh right because i i think it helps tremendously I, I want you guys to get credit for what you're doing and i want the budget committee to follow along as they're getting ready to do your budget okay um on the first page current major projects uh lafayette road sewer replacement so you're not going to be starting the drain line on the west side of Lafayette Road this year, right? Correct. Correct. This is just the sewer on the east side, and it's going to be all pretty. Correct. That brings up the question in my mind, ladies and gentlemen, of Article 44, because we're still going to have to sit down 
And we, we've talked about Article 44 many times already, and I, I think it's done, right? It's done. It, it's what's it's done. Full. The article has been. The money's going back when the audit is. No, no, no. What I'm saying, it, the the ornamental lighting. So I'm in Article 9. I'm we, sorry, Article been over 9. This a million we, we've times. talked about ornamental lighting, and that's probably the worst thing. I will never use the word again. Yeah, please. I will never use that word again. <laughs> we 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 we've ha brought this up a number of times. Can we move forward, please? So under Article 9, now we're just going to be doing sorry. the drainage. On the west side we are going to be doing the rest of the drainage the curbing the sidewalk the pavement the final pavement what you're getting out there now right. is a temporary they call yes. it a shim coat. i understand that with that we will look at the street lighting meaning the poles that light yeah. the street and determine if they need to go back to unitil because we pay a rent charge on them or if we're going to put up our own LED fixtures, light saving activity. Well, that's the part that concerns me. And but it's still not designed, that. and well, that is I don't where we're coming to any conclusion on that. And I and while we're talking about it, I would like to make sure we got a Comcast recap of their quote uh, last week. But I have not received any quotes in writing from the other utilities that were contacted. And that that has nothing to do right now with their report. So well, that's what it, we're working on right now. Okay. Well, but it, it is public works. I made a couple of other. Um, Mill Pond Dam. You are taking pictures as they're going along on it. There is supposedly blasting right next to that for that the new <clears throat> condos. Is that having any impact? We have been working with I their contractor worried. completely, 100% coordinated. Uh, we've been working with uh, how we're going to report out one blast nobody can do another blast that was part of their things yeah. until we check everything we have meters on our dam on our mill they have meters on their properties okay. there's a residents have meters so yes this is a very coordinated effort because i thought that was kind of scary where they were blasting so close to your project um whoops. temporary force main um do you have an idea when that when you're going to be able to actually start it Right. I mean, do you want me to give you the little update on that now, or you want to go around? That's up to oh, you guys. You you plan on doing an update? Yes, I so, do have an update. So we'll talk about sort of everything all at once for okay, the force main. We'll thank we'll you. do that. And give me a sec. And thank you for the pictures in here because that's great on the vehicles. Um, I you are a master of understatement that we are aware that there are roads that are in <coughs> tough shape. Um, on the repairs, and I don't have a page four, a cast iron sewer service was replaced, et cetera. Have we finished installing those locking manholes down at the beach so that we don't have the manhole covers popping up? Well, the only covers that I'm aware of that pop up are the ones along Ocean Boulevard that are tied to the state's drainage when they get the high tide uh, surge. So they're, they're not my covers. Okay, good. Uh, but um, at close to $700 a piece and, order, and ordering 20 of them a year, it's about $20,000 worth yeah. every year. I think it, it gets me 20, 22, 24. Um, it'll be an ongoing process for the next 10 years. Okay. Because that does help to reduce the flooding and stuff. I appreciate it. This is a great, great report. Thank you. Yep. Virginia. Um, yes, you only got, what, about six or seven major projects going on right now? That's all. That's all. Yeah. Those are just the ones that are active. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll hear about the uh, sewer pipe, I guess, in a little while. But I wanted to ask a question about the amount of wastewater processed. It's gone up over about 23 million gallons. Is that, do you think, from part of the storm, getting all those storms and things like that? Yeah, is that it's, why? it's partially a function of the storms, yeah. Okay. It, and, and the other thing is it's weather related. It's uh, meaning the heat index related, uh, activity at the beach, person, personal activity at the beach. So all those things are factors, you know. It, it, it tends to balance it out, itself out there in the, the end of each yeah. year, but it, it, they are all factors. Okay. And um, I have something else to bring up, but not related to this report, but I'd just like to bring it up while Public Works is still here, if that's okay after. Can we bring it up after? We, we, yeah, after we, they go through their okay, normal agenda. Right. Yeah, so. Jim? Uh, good report. Glad you know how to do your job. 
Do you have any prices on ornamental lights for me or anything? Mm -hmm. All right. No, not yet. Just not yet. So when you talk about the uh, water being up, that's up over last year? Yeah, or, just in the Yeah, and last year there operation. was a drought. Yeah, so yeah. yeah, if you have years like that that are, you know, the groundwater so table is low. So there's going to be an increase at any rate right. when the drought is over. Sure. Thank you, and I salute you. Thank you. I get two things. Um, the lines downtown, as soon as you get it paved, they are going to paint them, correct? Correct. Along with the crosswalks. Yes, sort of, that will so all that be done probably if we get paved this week, next week. Okay, just want to make sure. The other thing is I, I, I did notice the uh, flashing crosswalk signs, and I really appreciate get those getting done. But looking at those, the trees that are on that side of the on the east side of the road, mm -hmm. the, there's a couple of trees there. They really block that that crosswalk light. Um, and if you look at those, there's a couple of trees there. Over the years, they've been I won't say butchered, but if you look at them, they're, they're not very pretty. Okay. Um, take a look. And I want to take a look at those because I'm sure. Um, I know last year the gentleman that that owns that property who said he'd be willing to to put some new trees, you know, replace those if we if we could take those down because they look Good. so crappy. So um, if uh, if you take a look at them and you want to give me a call, we'll, I'll, I'll facilitate talking to him, see if we can put some new Good. trees there to make it look better and make the crosswalk safer. Okay. So Good. very good. So now we're on to the the temporary line. You want to do that one, or you want to do the revision to the cart? To the revision cart. the cart policy. Okay. Oh, really. Difficult. Different. Different. Totally different topic. <laughs> Basically, what um, I'm asking the board to support is uh, the idea of additional free carts town wide. When we started this process way back in '11, when the new trucks came and 10,000 carts came, and we delivered one and one to each unit in town. Um, some businesses got four and five, some businesses got 10, some businesses mm. got upwards to 40. Yeah. Um, what we're seeing is um, cart creep, if you will, in that we started out with 10,000 carts out there. We have somewhere in the vicinity of 15,000 carts out there now. Oh God. Some of them we are pulling back in. We are um, if you will, contracting the service just on a cart by cart, ca case by case basis. Um, two of them occurred last week. Um, seasonally, they're going to have a big party. They want a whole new cart. Had multiple phone discussions with them. Nope, they're going to utilize the uh, uh, transfer station after the parties are over and um, bring their extra recycling to the to the transfer station so this is you know so that's just one example of what I'm seeing department wide is is you know if one cart's good three's fantastic and five's better well it just occurred to me at what point do we you know we stop the the free um, and, and and I don't mean that we're not going to give out any more carts or, or make any more carts available. Um, I'm asking to cease replacing carts if they've been stolen, uh, if they've been taken to Texas in a moving van, uh, if they've been blown away or washed away, yep. um, if um, independent contractors have run over them during a snowstorm. Um, the intention here is to make uh, the individual property owners more responsible for the carts. They are there town provided property attached to that unit yep. you know I want to want to say that their property it is the town's of property but it is attached to those units or dwellings um, we would still keep parts in stock um, we had someone last week come in uh, the wheels fell off uh, we took in their cart we give them a different cart there you go we just exchange the numbers mm -hmm. and when things slow down on Tuesday they put new wheels on it and that cart will get reissued to somebody else so it's been a $10,000 item in my budget. I'm trying to, uh, if you will, maintain the status quo and the level of service. Good. One of the issues that I'm, I'm going to face if this continues onward is uh, not enough trucks and not enough people to collect all the carts that are out there. 
what we're also seeing is um, carts half full. This cart's got one bag of trash in it, and it's located next to another cart. It may be your neighbor's cart, but if he's only got one bag of trash in it, put your bag in his, take your cart back up to your... Each, each pickup cost me about two minutes of time. Yeah. Well, you can imagine if you put out an additional 100 carts, that's 200 minutes, which is almost three hours of labor. So it can't, it's not, it's not really sustainable, is I guess what I'm saying. And this is only one part of, I am looking at other things, um, the weight of carts, uh, level of service, things of that nature, but that would be another discussion for another time. But right now, I'd this like to change to residential. the- Residential. Right, I'd like to change the uh, idea of additional free carts. I think we should talk about this right now. I can't believe that you give carts out to people that they blow away. If they blow away, they should have to buy a new one. People don't care about the carts. I, I, I was under the impression that you would have given them away. I, I think this is ridiculous. I think whatever was give, what we gave out at the beginning should be the very end of it. That's... And, uh, but what they I'm, point out to me is that I don't have a policy. People buy a new house, build a new house, okay, they miss the initial... Uh, uh, giving out of the carts is how I think it should be. Right. But I can't believe you would give, people don't give a care in the world about the carts. I see them blowing around all the time. If I hear my cart blow around, I run out and do something about it. I don't think that we have, should have any responsibility to even give for broken carts. When the cart breaks, the party's over, they need to buy a new one, as far as I'm concerned. And I think it should be that way. And I had no idea this was going on. Oh, yeah. yeah. I have no problem fixing carts. If somebody does it and it gets, the wheels fall off it, that's one thing. But I agree totally with Rick. That I'm willing to make a motion right now that this come to an end. I would second that motion. Well, let's. Well, all right. So I have a motion second, but let's have some discussion on it. Yeah. Thanks. Jim? I'm fine with what Rick said. Hmm. Yeah, but several. And I want to be clear. because Just on this topic, Mary Louise. I smooth, yeah. Maybe smoothed over it is that. Um, in keeping with this, if there's new subdivision projects, new projects in general in, in town, single f lots, they have to buy the carts. Uh, yeah, the I definitely think that. We did this, when we did this, I was on this board, and we did it to be generous and to get people into it. <laughs> it's over. The then they've moved here. They know how, how it's supposed to be. I'm willing to include in my motion that we uh, add assistance to fix these because it is it would be a shame to waste them. I mean, then you'll right. have a recycling uh, card in your recycling. Right. Uh, you know, so I can see why we might want to fix them. Yeah. Because it's the right thing to do. But I think that this has come to an end. And when Mr. Welch came up with the plan to buy these cards to begin with, it was to get this uh, the party going, and it's. Well, you know, anyone that moves here, uh, you know, pe people that sell their houses could be taking these carts, like you said, to Texas, so they're in the back of a truck they are. and stuff like that. That This is, as far as I'm concerned, finished. Mary Louise, on this topic. Yes, thank you for the memo, and, and I appreciate it. Um, first of all, I think that the public should be encouraged to put a sticker on their cart with the address, the street, name and number uh, that sh I, I, you know, I did it month, years ago, but I think that we should be able to identify where the cart lives. Um, we do have a system. We do keep, there's a serial number on each cart. Yes. And probably I would say 95% of the carts, I, if you give me the number, I can tell you where the cart was really right. issued to. But it might not hurt to put, I mean. Well, just, we would. And that's what we've asked people to do is, you know, put your... It's not a big deal to put a sticker. ...for the street number on in yeah. front And of it you. also helps so that they don't move from one place to another. Right. Yes. So we can keep track of them. Um, we need to stop collecting waste and giving out carts to condominiums except for two-unit condos. We've 
Well, this is something that I've asked to discuss with the planning board. Well, we're not giving out any more anyway of this motion go, so I think it's irrelevant what you're talking about. So let's well, bring it to a I, vote. I don't know if, if two so unit now, condos are We're bringing it to an end, the, Mary uh, Louise, if this motion uh, goes. And right. then... But, but um, to address her, Mary Louise, if yes, I can sir. interrupt. Thank you. I should apologize. Um, the board does have a policy that five units and greater we don't collect anyhow. So if there was a... It should be two units and greater. It's five. I mean, already have more one. than... We're not right, talking and that, that's really on, only occurs on condo conversions. Right. On new condominiums, right. pretty much on a case-by-case -case basis. I don't think we're giving out... And then any that's right. we're excellent. Them. That's, we're excellent. Really that's what our motion is, and let's stick to our motion. Um, the... Um, and. In the uh, carts, uh, in the second paragraph, um, you, sa you say that the uh, this would be in keeping with other town policies that new sewer connections, water connections to aquarium, driveway permits, wastewater development fees, school impact fees, and other related costs are borne by the developer. This has been a sore spot especially regarding impact fees. Okay, so but the fees we're stick to this. No, stick I'm to sorry. This. I'm, I'm forgetting what we're doing. About the car, the car. I'm talking about the memo that is in front of me this that I just read from. This is a motion and and the a second. But this is mislead. I just want to clarify here. The costs are never borne by the developer. Okay, it's that all is not passed well, on to Mr. The people Chairman. Yes. I wish you would property. stop her from this. We we have and a motion then, a second. Okay, uh, um, wait a Regina, minute. Wait, wait, do, wait. Do you wait. have I'm something on, the, on the motion? I'm on the. Do you have something on the motion? Just well, let me turn the page here. Give me a second. And by the way, turn there's the nothing page, to be and we're, let's served. Stick with what nothing we're doing. to be served by being rude here, gentlemen. No, but we need to stay the, with the motion. That's fine. Um. If the board approved this policy change, the department would charge a builder of a new home for one recycling and that one refuse. That is not what part. this is about. So that I can understand. Well, yes, this is what that's yes. about. That that is what yes. this is about. So that if it happens, his policy when he brings it back to us to finalize it, yeah. that's that will be in there. Yeah. But that's it. So, so Regina, the board approves this policy. We no longer issue any free carts for anyone, right. commercial, residential. That's the end of it. It's ninety dollars. You get a recycling. You get a trash right. cart, and we're done. Good. Okay. Yeah, I agree with so that. I have a motion and a second. All those in favor? So I, I would say that you come up with how it's we'll, worded we'll and, our and bring it back to us. To and if you're not making a profit from doing those at ninety dollars, I think you should add a carrying charge to it. Mm -hmm. So, okay. So now we have the, the temporary line. Temporary line. All right, so update as to where we're at. We did go back to the two companies uh, that are going to supply the temper that would have supplied the temporary piping, uh, and we were able to get a best price from oh. Sunbelt Rentals. Um, their total fees came in um, at basically $11,250 a week versus what we were thinking was going to be 13 oh. and change. Uh, they had a setup fee around 60000 and that's their setup and demobilization and flushing of the lines and taking it out. Um, so I am in the process of working with Fred and Chris to put together the total costs uh, for everybody so everybody would understand what the temporary force main installation and removal costs are going to be, um, as well as the costs that are projected for the permanent force main replacement. Good. Um, so I have a draft um, done. I'll review it with Fred uh, hopefully this week and we'll get that out so everybody can start seeing uh, the numbers that go along with this. On the temporary force main, I think it's important that everybody understands that it's not just the pipe. Um, we'll be cutting in a large valve, say a large valve, a $14,000 valve uh, that connects to our Church Street pump station lines. Um, this will enable us to use our pumps yeah. versus having to um, rent pumps using our pumps is a significant dollar savings um, and there's nothing wrong with our pumps uh, so it will allow us to sort of bypass we also plan on burying the temporary pipe across those driveways so uh, aquarian the electric the homeowners uh, before you get on to route 101 we'll also need a site contractor to connect that temporary pipe to the manhole wow. in tide mill road uh, that man will have to be cored 
uh, with the pipe coming in. So these are all the things that we've put together over the last, um, since I guess the last time we were here. Uh, and we have in my inbox, as of before I got to this meeting, a contract, which I will bring to Fred uh, tomorrow as the board has authorized him to get this going. Uh, this will be for Sunbelt. Uh, we have already contacted the insurance companies. We're, we're doing all the pieces that the uh, contract has said. Uh, the pipe is currently in uh, New Jersey. Uh, they are organizing once they get the signed contract back. Uh, it will all be coming this way, wow. um, straight here. And so parallel, that's where the pipe is. Parallel, we are working with Wright Pierce to solidify a bridge detail that the state will allow us to use to attach the temporary pipe to the bridge. So not on the bridge decking. Wow. There's just safety issues there and other things. Um, our engineers have gone back with bridge. They have a direct contact. No one is, you know, holding anything up. They're legitimately sending details back and forth to each other each day, uh, really trying to get this approval. In this approval, meaning everybody agreeing to how we're going to attach it to the bridge. Uh, once that is done, uh, NHDOT will uh, issue a temporary and permanent UNO for um, wow. the temporary installation and the permanent uh, installation. So again, from a timeline, we're hoping we work out all these details this week. That's what we've been saying, and you know, get a UNO on the table uh, to sign. It could take a week. It could take two weeks. It's nothing that we're not doing. It's we're going through it. Um, and they're protecting their assets, and yeah. we're making sure that we're protected too, you know, getting the insurance and our roots in line. Um, I believe later on tonight there is the uh, easement, or was it in the consent agenda? I'm not sure. But we have our easements in place. Uh, we have contacted DES, wetlands. They have authorized us to place the temporary under our permanent permit. Uh, because we're not doing any additional, so that permit did not need any additional work. Um, the Army Corps of Engineer permit that's on our permanent pipes that we have, the programmatic permit for Army Corps has expired. They are working to attach the new programmatic permit to oh our um, final and our temporary pipes. Um, and with that, that's sort of the clean slate uh, to go. Wright Pierce has sent over the revised plans for the permanent, meaning accounting for the change of dates, um, the potential uh, meeting at the end of summer, uh, to get DES's authorization to rebid, as this is an SRF funded project or proposed funded project. DES has to approve all drawings and plans. Um, we're expecting that back tomorrow or the next day. So again, everybody's doing their parts and sending us back their approvals. Once we have that in hand, we are looking to advertise the bids by next Monday. Oh my God. Wow. So that would be June 11th. Uh, they would come back uh, by July. Uh, and at that time, you'll have the actual price of the construction to put in the chart I'm working with uh, Fred on on my estimated construction costs. That's for the permanent pipe. For the permit. So keeping in mind that the permanent pipe <coughs> is composed of the construction costs, the engineering oversight, materials testing, it's not just the contractor's bid price. There, there are other costs. Just like with this temporary pipe. There's Sunbelt's costs, there's the site contractor's cost, there's DPW parts costs, there's over time. So we're trying to put these into two cohesive packages so everybody is on the same page as we somewhat quickly go through this process. Um, that is the update. There's a lot of moving parts. We are just trying to not get hit by them. <clears throat> Any questions? Do you ever get to take a nap? Today? Yes. That's I didn't take I one today. I came in at 7.05 <laughs> because... This is pretty dazzling. The, the, the quantity of uh, accomplishment amazing yeah. it's coordination and the better that we coordinate and communicate mm -hmm. and that's why giving you this update and letting you know it's not one person's you know holding anything up this is just how many pieces it's there amazing. are to yeah. get this all done. Regina? A lot. Um, so <coughs> you'll we'll have a better idea on what the temporary pipes are gonna be probably 
by our next. Yeah, I, I, from what I'm hearing mm -hmm. and knowing that we need a UNO before I can Thank you, sir. put any pipe on the ground right. and the UNO is only because we're still working out some details that are structural in nature. Um, we're looking probably two weeks, you know, okay. worst case two and a half. They'll start the minute we tell them, but again, we'll sign tomorrow. Mm -hmm. They'll start demobing from, I think they said New Jersey, and then they'll come up this so way. So the, as far as we know, it should be up by the end of June. June. Yeah. We hope. Okay. Yeah. That would be. And, and we're we're gonna get it in as soon as we can. Um, it's amazing. Realistically, we are working on a whole bunch of other things, so this hasn't been a 24-7, right. you know, <laughs> um, but we're we're moving right along. Wow. And, oh, so I just oh, said one more thing. I was actually talking to the town manager about, I guess they were able to accomplish quite an easement for both the uh, temporary and the permanent pipe. We'll get to that a little later in the agenda. Oh, okay. All right. Perfect. <clears throat> Thank you. That's Jim, it. good job. Thank you. Rick? Thank you. Thank you. The only thing I had is the temporary pipe's going to pump into tide mill interceptor. Correct. And the new pipe will go all the way to this, the plant. Correct. The new the new pipe actually replaces the tide mill interceptor. Okay. Right. As part of its scope. Wow. Very Increases good. the size by six inches. Great. All right. I think Regina had oh, one I question. Yeah, I did because I uh, this was put in our box. You attended, Chris, a dredge management task force meeting? Yes. Is uh, that? A week and a half ago, yeah. What I think, is that trying to get them to dredge the harbor? Or you were talking about dredging the harbor? Yeah. Um, but understand <coughs> it is just a, um, the, the committee is aptly named. It's a task force. Right. Um, it, it's, it's a great communication forum. There's probably 30 people in the room. Uh, representing all sorts of departments from the senators and the congressmen's offices. Mm -hmm. They're there um, because they're trying to push for the funding. Yeah. But it's a it's kind of like a wrestling match because at the same time they discuss the turning basin to get larger gas distribution ships into uh, Sprague Energy and, and that end of the Scatequa River. Uh, we talk about the number of harbors up and down the East Coast that need Oh, yeah. This funding. Um, we talked about the methodology um, of how to get a scow or a, a what is a barge under the Neil Underwood Bridge in to, to do that. Yeah. And then part of it is um, I've seen a change. Two years ago, uh, you couldn't give away the dredge material. Now it's almost like it's the New York Stock Exchange and we're bidding against each other for oh. it because everybody wants it to replace the sand on their beaches. Uh, Dread wants it for um, the beach just south of Boar's Head, that inside corner. Um, Seabrook doesn't want it. Salisbury does. Uh, somebody else does. Um, it's, it's interesting how many people want the sand now. But the sand amount, they had, the, uh, one of the Army Corps people did admit that the, in two years, the amount of sand in the harbor has doubled. Oh, yeah. And... Um, that you know literally something needs to get done but um it's it's all due to funding and it's all due to who's on first and um it literally is a draft it is a task force and i i know the decision is not made in that room that's for sure that's for sure yeah. so there is no funding there is but it's limited it's like uh you know you need ten dollars and you got a buck so it's how do we take that one dollar cheeseburger from McDonald's and <laughs> equally places. divided over seven harbors, and that's that's the wrestling match that's going on, and, and it gets down to economics and uh, things of that nature. So, um, so much for the infrastructure things that were supposed to happen in this country. Well, and and then part of the discussion while I was there was, you know, I said to the guy from the Corps that when he he had mentioned that the the barge is is like 30 32 feet wide and that the opening under the Hampton Harbor Bridge is 40 and I said well why it's being redesigned as we speak because that was the day after we met with Nancy Stiles and she said she was going to a scoping meeting to see the new bridge I said why don't you ask the new people to it's being redesigned he, he was surprised to, to find that the bridge was 
under design. I was like, well, you, <laughs> you might want to include that as a, a comment or a question, you know. So uh, it was in it's interesting to see um, the dynamics. <coughs> and um, it literally is, as I say, a task force. So um, wow. great to be there. It's great to influence the process, but at the same time, uh, that's why I felt the need to report back to the manager's office that this is what's going on. It's the reality. Okay. What's going on in the back room? I don't know. There? Anything else for them? I'm good. Thank Very you. good. I'm, thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. On your way out, you want to just have yeah, I'll make quiet it. down yeah. in there? Thank you. I'll go in and raise a bit. Good. Somebody won the lottery. <laughs> I, I think I recognize the voice. <laughs> 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 Uh, next one up is uh, Chief Ayotte, Fire Department, along with uh, Deputy Kennedy. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Yeah. Welcome after a busy weekend. Yes, sir. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. <laughs> sure, please. Thank you. Deputy's going to pass out some charts that will help discuss did, further. Did they notify you yeah. that the bridge was stuck? Actually, we, uh, Deputy and I, were uh, down in that area. We were going to examine some of the construction that was going on. We identified that it was up. The officer Feely was on scene. She was directing traffic. Thank we you. actually helped some of the people come off of the bridge and do three point turns to get off and wow. get home. And then we assisted two pedestrians get around. So I had called Mr. Welsh to let him know that we had two pedestrians in the vehicle and we were driving around Seabrook and wow. rescue oh, services. <laughs> rescue <laughs> services, that's huh. right. Boy. So this evening I come to you to discuss the fact that it is my intention and goal to uh, maintain nine for the duration of the summer period. Uh, you'll see a chart in front of you right now that has both the entrance data for the fire side of the house as well as in the back you see TEMSIS data for the um, yeah. emergency medical services. EMS. And you can see with that curve there, we definitely see a spike during the summertime. Yeah. Now the intention to staff to nine or maintain nine, to it, it takes some description. We are fully staffed, and this is the first year since I've been your fire chief that we are fully staffed. We've had that now for one year uh, in total. Um, we added our last firefighter for a vacant position in April of last year. <coughs> Excuse me. To say that we're fully staffed means that there's no vacancy due to whether it was a retirement or injury uh, or something like that. Um, we have had a history over the last five years of several significant injuries that have taken people out, whether it's shoulders, knees, backs. Um, this is a dangerous business where we're required to do a lot of heavy lifting. Uh, in order to understand what staffing to nine means, that means that we have three people on an engine here at headquarters, three people on an engine at the beach, and three people that staff the ladder truck. Uh, the two people that are on the ladder truck in addition to the driver also cross staff the initial ambulance. Okay. Uh, we do something now, and I know that you've been, uh, Mr. Walsh has shared with you the letter that states that we run to eight, and that's been the process for longer than I've been here. Yep. So um, when we look at the, the possibility of what we can do previously, and it, when I was first hired, uh, there was a policy, especially in the beginning of the year, where we weren't sure where our budget was because we were still waiting for the town vote, that we would run down to seven, which I feel is an exceptionally unsafe position. Mm. I don't like running to eight. I think that nine is the bare minimum. If we were a sports team and we looked at baseball and we understand that there's nine people who play on a baseball team, who would you like to do without? Personally, I don't want to do without anybody. So if we understand that and we need an entire field to play the game, starting now, I need to know, I need to make sure that we have that full field. As we come into the summer season, as it's described right there, you'll see that our call volume increases approximately 40%. Yeah. By doing so, we're going to increase our call volume. We're going to increase <clears throat> the time that people will be out of the station <clears throat> doing calls. But we also have to increase our readiness. The, f the nine people increases that readiness at all times. Um, it, like I said, is my intention to do so, but I do have some reservations about cost. Now, I feel that moving forward, this is a default year budget, as we all know, so we have to be very, very um, mindful of that. We don't want to treat the taxpayers as if they're ATMs. And I think that in my history here, and Saturday will be my anniversary. It's three years that I've been your fire chief as appointed. So in those three years, I think that you can look back on my history financially and see that I'm very fiscally responsible. I've come in under budget each time. And I fully anticipate doing that this time by maintaining a vigilance on what we're doing and what we're spending. By the same token, if we do go to nine and uh, maintain that throughout the summer season and as long as we possibly can, 
that may mean that the budget will get tighter. This year, we, we have had the financials from uh, Ms. Pulliam, our finance director, has given us the latest, which were at one third of the year, 33 percent. They were they were the ones that came out of March. They included all the way through the end of April. And I had described to you when I was here on May 7th that we were already at 79 percent for OT callback for fires. This weekend, we had two additional fires. Mm -hmm. So I anticipate that before the end of this month, with OT callback for fires, that we'll see that I'm at 100 percent and I'm not even at 40 percent of the year yet. So I have to balance that, and I'm watching that very closely. Um, I do think that I will be able to absorb most of the costs within this budget, potentially not all. Now, I did put forward an article, uh, I'm sorry, a letter to Mr. Welch, and he, I know he shared it with you. Um, Ms. Malay and I had worked out the, the amount of hours as, uh, along with an average for how much it would cost. Uh, Ms. Pulliam from the, the finance department changed the average slightly she used a little bit of higher average, and then she also added into the costs of workers' compensation, uh, Medicare, and uh, retirement. Those costs are not seen by me typically when I'm doing the budget. As a budget resource, I put in overtime, and then the other costs come in a as a result of that. Um, when we put this forward, and as far as the staffing to nine, this has been something that I've been trying to do since I was a fire chief. Mr. Welch and I have had several conversations. This is going to be the, the fourth year that I prepare a budget for you, but uh, each year I have put forward in a different mechanism to try to staff to nine, and it's still the intention to do so. I know that we had talked about that in November as well, sir, uh, as you had brought that up with the intention of potentially going for a safer grant. Last year, if you'll recall, we had also uh, spoken with Speaker Jasper when he was the Speaker of the House, and he had indicated that he would be willing to cost share at that time for an ambulance at the beach, which I told all of you that it would require 10 personnel to do that appropriately oh, yeah. so that we'd have three at the fire station down there with two on the ambulance, three here with two who would cross out the ladder and on another ambulance. To do that, the cost generated there, it was not a full day cost. It was a smaller um, day. We were looking at 16 hours because we were sharing the costs. It was going to be $33,000 potentially on the town side and 44 for the state side. Yep. If we move forward now with staffing for what we know historically as a vacancy, um, we looked at a five-year average for this, um, we will anticipate that it will cost us approximately $57,000 and then if we use Christie's numbers to increase the total with all in the workers' comp and, and fringe benefits associated with that, it'll be, a I believe it's a total of $80,985.51. Again, looking at my budget and looking at where we stand, I do believe that I'll be able to absorb most of that. However, I would be very remiss if I didn't tell you that there might come a time when, as we're moving through the season, because you can't project out over the course of some season how busy we'll be, and again, you know, once we get into the winter, the, the early side of the winter, there may be other problems that we have to uh, anticipate. Um, hurricane season started on Friday, so there's, there's any sort of problems that we might encounter. As we get closer, I would have to come talk to you, but if we do, there may be a possibility of budget overrun. So I've put forward the figures. I've told you what I'd like to do. I'm coming to you to seek consensus so that I can get to that point that you'll allow me to do that if need be. Mary Louise. Ah, where to begin? Well, as long as we um, keep it on the subject, we're been right there. Uh, <laughs> you ended 2017, according to the December 2017 income and expense statements. That's Christie's final statement. You ended the year with about 207,000. How how would you achieve the staffing for nine? You is that to keeping your current? No, that's a great question. I understand where you're going. Keeping your current firefighters, yeah. or hiring. That the, no, so help. so in order to, I, I guess I should explain what staffing to nine means. Yes. Currently, we have a captain, a lieutenant, seven firefighters. Right. Okay. During the day, if the captain is out, his position is filled with another captain or a lieutenant as TSOR, temporary service officer. Right. If a lieutenant is out, they're filled with a lieutenant or another captain, or potentially a firefighter as temporary service out of right. Firefighters, if they take vacation, sick, or are on an education class, or God forbid, an injury, and they're out, then that first position is not filled. So we call it no-fill. And in the book where they do the overtime coverage, they leave it as no-fill, which means that on any given day, instead of seven firefighters, they'll be down to six. You're short. Yeah. Yes. But the coverage point comes in when we hire in overtime. So we'll hire in a firefighter that already works for us. I know that you had talked about 
additional staffing, but this is a firefighter that's already presently employed. Yeah. He'll be paid time and a half. She'll be paid time and a half for the duration of their shift. Yeah. And that usually is for any portion of the shift that, that's vacant. Yeah. Okay. Now, you've got two fire stations. True. You're, if I understand you correctly, you're trying to run a, uh, your fire apparatus out of each station. So you've got two engines Correct. to staff. Um, and then alive. you've got an ambulance at the beach. No uptown. No, no uptown. uptown. Well, I mean, but you're looking for an ambulance. You're not, you're, so you're going to respond from uptown to the beach all summer. God help We've us. We've been doing that right along, yes, And you're ta And what's going to happen with the first aid at the beach? So right now, yeah. um, we, we're very we're very fortunate right now because we've had a significant increase in our number of paramedics. However, if we are down to one paramedic mandated, whether it's vacation or whatever um, yeah. other people are out, we will have one paramedic on duty. They're located on the engine at the beach. So in that district, the paramedic is located there, and they'll be able to respond to any medical aid call that occurs down there. And they'll be first due. They'll be on scene uh, very rapidly. They have all of the equipment necessary to treat that person, minus the stretcher and the ambulance. What about walk-ins? That happens at the beach frequently. So people I come know. in. We have a nice uh, walk-in medical aid room that they're treated down there. You are dreadfully short-staffed. Well, it's my intention today to start the process of moving. You this up are time. dreadfully short-staffed. And, and we're going to talk about that <clears throat> additionally later on when it comes to budget time that's my my pure intention but this right now is talking about staffing at nine at least for the summer um, that's true and mr walsh has given me 25 more days to give him the budget so but in addition because the chief's memo of may 10th is here too and it's talking about the administrative fifa fire details because this is i assume a little bit more of an opportunity to bring in some revenue no not really well, if we're not, this wouldn't bring. This is not for details. That's this a is separate. For just, this is, that's a separate. Well, issue. I realize that, but it's a possible source of revenue. No, is no. it not? No, it's a coverage of costs. We're not just, generating any revenue from it. We're covering our costs. But have, but ha, when I read this, it looks to me like we haven't been covering our costs. That's why you want to go to thirty percent. What 30%. I want to do is is move to forty two percent so that we can cover costs. But we have to have a hearing next week. Correct. Uh, two, okay. weeks. two weeks. So we'll, two be, weeks. we'll be talking that. that in two weeks. Because we don't want to be just to wait. breaking. We couldn't bring it tonight because it had to be notified in the paper with seven okay. days. And so that'll be happening in two weeks. Because I read that too. Yeah. If you give me stuff, I read it. Okay. Um, hmm. I I uh, and then you've got the failure to fill. If you would. What do you mean by that, ma'am? Mm -hmm. Well, you, you said in here the no fill. If we don't give him the nine, he goes down to eight. Well, um, I still or have the seven. opportunity. It's still within my jurisdiction to fill to nine. However, my concern would be if I got to the point where I was going to overrun the budget, yeah. I don't want to do that. Not without your permission. So where this is, I'm coming to you because I'm going to do the best I can to maintain the budget. Obviously, I have $3.6 million that I have to deal with. And the townspeople have decided that this is what we're going to do. This is a default budget. However, in maintaining this and moving forward, we might come to an area that we are not able to maintain certain things. There might have to be cuts in other areas. But there will also come a time when those cuts can only, you can only go down to bone. You can't go any further. So after that, it may overrun, at which point I'll come in front of you again and discuss the fact that we're getting this close and we'd like to overrun the budget with your permission. And just just a quick comment, either the next time you're in or whatever, I would like to be able to discuss that Senate Bill 541, the cancer prevention for uh, presumption for firefighters, because I think we need to talk about that as well. Regina. Okay, so is it possible to take any of this from the EMS fund? Is there a way to do that? At this time, right now, the, the EMS fund is dedicated towards uh, EMS callback, EMS training, mm -hmm. um, staffing of ambulances. When we're doing storm coverage right now, uh, especially when we're telling people that they're going to be on the ambulance, that's where the, the funding for that comes from. I'm coming to sit before you right now to tell you that your fire suppression force needs to maintain them a minimum of nine. I need to do that. Yes. Just like I said with the baseball team, you know, uh, if, we, if we imagine and I told you we have a captain and we have a lieutenant, they're both essential positions. 
So if we look at the pitcher and the catcher on a baseball team, essential positions, which other teammate would you be willing to lose, first base, second base? I would have to staff down just for the fire service. So I want to keep that team going. I want to keep this entire nine for the fire service. Now, I understand that we have an ambulance service as well. Two different businesses under the same roof. In doing so, two people are going to go on the ambulance. They're going to transport to Seabrook ER, Exeter ER, Portsmouth, whatever it might be. They'll be gone for a certain amount of time, so we do call back. And we've been getting a tremendous um, group of people have been coming back, and they've been staffing the, the apparatus as needed. We've had a, a wonderful uh, run of callback right now. So what we can anticipate moving through the summer is that we're going to continue to see that. We'll be able to maintain nine as we go out the door. Um, we'll still be able to do the EMS calls, continue to have the appropriate fire suppression force during the high time, high season. You'll see, you know, like I told you, it's not only, it's not only EMS calls that are up, it's also fire calls that are up. So that's when we have to maintain that. Spot. Oh, you don't need to sell me on staffing till nine. I mean, I think that that <laughs> yeah. definitely needs to be what we have to do, but I'm just concerned if we do it for the summer and we strip the budget, then where are we going to be for the rest of the year? Because the winters don't seem like they, they're slowing down at all either. No, so that's no. my only concern. If you look at the, the trends that I gave you, the, it seems that the month that you want to be around here is April, but April this year had a three-alarm fire over yeah. on C Street and Ashworth Ave. A great so. job on that. The, I happen to be down there, and I'm Thank like, why man. is all this traffic down here so early in the morning? Well, I'll figure out why. <laughs> <laughs> Black <or> Rosa, yeah. <laughs> I, I'm sad. I, you know, I, I agree with what you're saying, and, and you, know, you need it for safety reasons, and I think we have to do it. Rick? Yeah, and I think you're doing a good job, and I don't feel the need to try to tell you how to run your department, and I think you're respectful of the default budget. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. All I can say is, you know, we, we had an article in the paper that had to deal with a certain town, city north of us here. Uh, they're, yeah. they're in the same predicament we are, um, yeah. and, and I know for the fact that the towns of Seabrook and Exeter and, and everybody else around us, they're in the same problem. You, you, they, they're trying to run on the minimum manpower they can and do the best job they can. But, however, our minimum is actually nine. So I'd be willing to make a motion to allow the chief to maintain nine, at least for the summer, and then we'll bring it back. My, my concern is, is not the maintenance of nine no, as much as the budget. It, and we understand the okay. fact that it may go over, and, and we understand that. There may be an override in that, and we, and we understand that. We also know that you're going to work hard not to have an override. So that will be my motion. A second. A second. Any other questions? All in favor? Unanimous. Thank you so much. Good Thank job. you. All right. Have Thank a great you very night. Much. Good thing. Absolutely. Town manager's report. <clears throat> Mr. Chairman, members of the board. Aquarian has notified the town that the pump test for well 22 is expected to run from June 13th to June 27th. That's an estimate. Right. Uh, the test will be at 600 gallons per minute instead of 1,000 gallons per minute as originally planned. The Hampton Beach Area Commission has placed a plan on the suggested construction of Route 1A in the front lobby of the town offices. The plan will be visible at that location until the commission's next meeting this week. Household has this waste collection day is June 23rd at the Public Works facility from 8 a.m. to 12 noon. The Hampton Beach State Park will hold a community meeting on June 12th from 5 to 6.30 p.m. in the Seashell Oceanfront Pavilion to discuss the upcoming 2018 season as well as winter operations at the seacoast. I would request that the board appoint James Sullivan as the acting town manager for the period of June 18th to 24 to come my, cover my vacation period. And uh, we have received word from the state. As you know, we, we had uh, been uh, at odds with the state on the replacement of the bridge out on the interstate at the Taylor River. The bridge is completed. They have decided not to remove the dam. So the 77,000 cubic yards of contaminated waste behind it will not be released at this time into the harbor. The, the project's over nice. with. So I think that's a good thing. Um, reading the um, Daily Fires Dispatch for the uh, New England Division, um, they had an interesting note under uh, the Londonderry Paint Tire Shop fire, which happened 24 years ago. I think we all remember that giant fire they had over there. Uh, the substances which are found in the non-stick coatings and firefighting foam don't naturally degrade. That's why the groundwater is still contaminated 24 years later at that site. Oh, so that's a little indication of uh, 
some of the problems that may occur with uh, some of the problems we're having with the landfill up, up in uh, the north part of the, the county. I'll make a motion to uh, put um, make Jamie the town manager when Fred is away. Second. The 18th of 24th. Yes, sir. Motion second. All those in favor? Unanimous. Any other questions for the town manager? Yep. Mary Louise? Yeah, first of all, thank you, Fred, for the uh, letters to Nancy Stiles at the HBAC and the uh, DOT district engineer. And apparently, uh, uh, Nancy Stiles did call me the day of the fire and on her way down to see, I mean, the bridge, and on her way down, she confirmed that the crosswalks have been painted. But uh, I appreciate your two letters there uh, in behalf of the interests of the board. Um, okay, one more. I've got so much stuff here. I'm trying to find my agenda. Good grief. There it is. Um, da -dum, da -dum. Finest kind. Did we ever get a letter from their attorney? Is this on the town manager's report? No, I, I, okay, you, well I can do it under, under old business. business. Well, we keep, all right, but. Yeah. Okay. This is the town manager's report. All right. So, Regina, do you have anything on the town manager's report? I'm good, thank you. Jim. I'm good. Rick. Thank you for your report. I appreciate thank you. it. Old business. We have these two here, and then we will Mary, I will go around. Mary Louise, if you have any old business. So we have the New Hampshire Municipal Association's permitted access. So um, you need to make a decision. Um, As of right now, how does it read? I've got the chairman of the board of selectmen. The chairman of the what board. What happens is every time you, you folks make up a decision in a list, it expires when the board's term expires, which okay. is annually. And then you have to make a new list up. And that's been the policy for right along for years. Yeah. Yes, um, that's what I thought. Um, so um, so what what is this board's I make a motion make, we stick it, with it, yeah, so I'll what we have. It. Discussion. I'm the one who asked to have this put on here. Okay. Yep. Right. Um, NHMA regulations say that the NHMA permits local government body, in your case the Board of Selectmen, to limit access to the NHMA legal services to only particular officials or boards, <clears throat> types of inquiries, or to respond only to inquiries directed through the governing body, the Board of Selectmen, or the town manager, we must and will scrupulously honor such a request. Furthermore, the NHMA provides our legal services to the municipality as a corporate entity. In Hampton, the Board of Selectmen is that entity and as such can control who does and does not get access to the NHMA legal services. Consequently, the NHMA is obliged to follow the written instructions of the Board of Selectmen. Um, I don't know how far back your recollections go, but I know in the past that anyone on the Board of Selectmen and other elected officials were able to access the um, Municipal Association on their own. Chairman uh, Selectman Barnes was, I think, very supportive and very smart in her position as the representative from this board to the Municipal Budget Committee. They are an elected, elected body, but they are not subservient to the Board of Selectmen. They are an independent elected body, and they should be able to access the NHMA through the chair and the vice chair, as Selectman Barnes requested. And that was no secret. She was very upfront and uh, very uh, open in her uh, discussion with the Budget Committee and with uh, coming forward to this board with her request. We are paying the Municipal Association uh, an annual fee for their um, help. Uh, I see no problem with allowing the chair and or the vice chair of the budget committee to seek help. If they seek help from town council, town council belongs to us. And they are in the position of actually um, keeping, the, uh, keeping the budget and keeping the expenditures in check because they make the budget. So it's a part of a check and balances, if you will, uh, on the Board of Selectmen. Uh, I think it is short-sighted. 
I think it is um, I think it is relegating us to some type of dictatorship if we're going to refuse to allow another elected body. Planning and zoning shouldn't need that. They can go to town council, but the uh, budget committee is an independent elected body. They're all elected officials, and I think they should have the option. Okay. Mrs. Barnes, oh, Ms. Barnes, I'm sorry. Um, did, did it work good last year? If they came to you, you brought it to the board, and then we that's how it worked last year. I mean, yes, I thought it went fine. I, to be honest with you, I didn't receive any questions that they wanted yeah. to go, even receive a question that they wanted to go to NHMA. Right. I mean, anything else I brought for the board to look at. And it worked, that seemed to work pretty good. You did I, a good job. And I think that I could easily do the same thing with any questions that they had. If it is the will of this board, me and Mary Louisa individuals, it was the will of this board to keep it the way it was last year. Absolutely. I, as a selectman rep and the intermediary between the board of selectmen and the budget committee, I believe if anyone, chairman or a regular member or vice chairman has a question, I don't see why we couldn't get that to NHMA if for whatever reason they if didn't so want long to as they brought it ask through. Mark. Right. Through, although they brought through it through the board. board. Okay. Any, any uh, questions over here? I'm ready to vote. All right. So we have a motion and a second oh. to leave it the way it is. And it, it, any, any questions to the NHMA will go through the chair. Yeah. It, this, there was a reason why we changed it. Yep. So and motion and a second. All those in favor? Those opposed? The motion passes four to one. So would you clarify for me, Mr. Chairman, if I have a question or Mr. Griffin has a question, Come to me we, and we cannot will, we will go to the NHMA. Correct. We have to go through you. Correct. Okay. Thank you. Thank the second you thing is the uh, Hampton service pin. Mr. <laughs> Town Manager. Mr. Chairman, uh, as directed, uh, the office has gone and uh, <clears throat> deal with, uh, dealt with uh, the company that we had been solicited by. Actually, we solicited them. We solicited two different companies. One responded to us, one did not. I think you all have a copy yes, of this us. pen. This, yep. is a, this is a good metal pen. It's, it's uh, similar to the town pen that we have that's good metal with a, with a clasp on the back. Uh, and uh, we want, want to know if you want us to proceed now to get estimates of the cost. What's the size? It's about the size of the one you have in your hotel. Well, yeah pretty small and yeah. it doesn't have we don't want it to be huge no but they don't doesn't have the rest of the information on it like your regular uh, well it will yeah. have the the years of service or however it does right but it's not so going to show you know, I, think founded that, I think it's great um, it's better than the plastic ones that they they gave out a few years well, ago. that was an insult well I know where a lot of them ended up I make uh, a motion that we go with that motion second. second all those in favor I think it's silly frankly okay so I'm opposed. opposed. Yeah. Four. We'll get opposed. you some costs and come back to you. Anything else under old business? Oh, I've do, do, I have do, something. Do. Okay. Yes. All right. Um, I do too. Coakley, I just want to real quick. Uh, there's a meeting, I guess, this coming week about June 7th, uh, Thursday. Mm -hmm. And uh, is it the Portsmouth City Councilors that are holding the meeting, I believe? And they're going to have uh, any comment, <laughs> public comment. They're uh, actually even set up a portal, I believe, if anyone has any questions they want to send to. And as everyone knows, the town has hired uh, Professor Ballestero, who has already gone through the yep. EPA's response and how they're going to handle the situation. He's prepared a report on some additional inquiries that he as an expert in the area has. And I would like those to be sent over to whoever, it, whether it's the EPA, the Portsmouth City Council, whatever that has to go to as part of commentary. If mm -hmm. they don't, I don't, for all I know, they might have already looked at it, I'm not sure. But I would like to go to that, to get over to that meeting. And, and also post it on our website. And I also would like that document that it's a little bit technical, but if you actually read Professor Ballesteros' comments, you can understand what the points he's getting at. I went through it this afternoon. And um, 
As far as Coakley <coughs> Landfill Group goes, I think they need to be held responsible. There was an article in the paper uh, this week that Sullivan had estimated the cost spent so far by $10 million. So instead of the $27 million that was quoted by Robert Sullivan, uh, the finance director, the city manager, no, finance director in Portsmouth has it determined to be slightly under $17 million. So I find that $10 million discrepancy very concerning, and I think taxpayers in Portsmouth should be concerned about it as well. So I would like to just make that available on our website if we could do that. Motion. Second. What? She made a motion to, to send that testimony over to... Oh. For the, send the meeting testimony they over. Not to, send second. Second. Not to send somebody over. Just yeah. send a copy just of the testimony. Paper. And along to put it, it on yeah. our website. That's good. For the motion. Second. All those in favor? Unanimous. Maybe they're going to use the meeting to pass the hat for the $10 million. No, never mind. Right. Well, Do you have anything else in the old business? Not, if it's full, yes. pass it this way. Um, I have a couple of, yes. Finest kind, do you know uh, whether they have put anything in writing yet, Fred? The last I heard about May 8th, um, they, uh, Chris was talking to their attorney and this paperwork that was supposed to be submitted. Well, they're working on a plan. Uh, an engineering plan which they have to send in before we'll sign anything uh, that shows the um, the secondary system that they have to install in order to run the plant and uh, but I thought there was some paperwork they initially had to sign and this goes back now a month and from the I still have the email in my queue and it looks like they were promising Chris that they were going to get something to him Sure. They have a temporary permit to continue their current operations at the current levels the town has approved. Yeah. But nothing in excess of that until such time as the supplemental uh, treatment plant is designed and approved by the town through our engineers and through the department. And then, then we can talk about giving them a permit. Okay. Only when it goes into operation. And they seem to have indicated that they want to boost the production uh, over the old, uh, yes, they can they can produce it to a billion barrels a, a week if they want, as long as they don't affect the wastewater treatment plant. Right. Jim? Okay. Thank you. you have anything under old business? Old business, no, sir. The only thing I have under old business is uh, we now have the um, paperwork back from the town manager and the assistant town manager on their on their accomplishments for last year. Oh, so I'm yeah. planning on our next meeting afterwards. We will have a non-public to go over their evaluations. Well, the next meeting is the meeting with the planning board. That's not a selectman's meeting, though. Right. Our okay. Next You're regularly scheduled one of our regular meetings. Right. Yeah. Okay. So we will plan on doing the uh, evaluations at that meeting. Okay. That's good. So new business. Okay. Go ahead. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Chair, members of the board. Uh, this past week, uh, we finished negotiations with the St. James Building Association for easements for the temporary and the permanent sewer lines to cross their property. Uh, the cost of the town is $600 per year, which basically is a tax exemption for their property. Uh, they were already tax exempt except for fire and police services. The estimate is somewhere between a half and a million dollars by, by doing this because wow. we don't have to go up and around and build all these different types of facilities and structures and so forth to accommodate the turns and so forth of the, the sewer main. Yeah. Um, this, this easement that's there remains in effect uh, as far as the tax exemption is concerned as long as the lodge owns the building. And the cost of the town is approximately $600 per year. Job. And this will this will give us carte blanche uh, on installing the uh, permanent sewer pipes and installing the temporary main as well. Wow. So do we need? Uh, we you need, need you need to vote to approve it. Uh, I need a motion to approve. Second. 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 All those in favor? Unanimous. Very well All done. Right. The second one is a 2018 warrant article for town office front door replacement cost of. Well, it exceeds the town purchasing policy by $942, and the reason it does that, uh, it, originally it was under $15,000, slightly, about $15,950. After evaluating this, we, f we figured that the easiest way to do this was on a non-work day. 
<laughs> so uh, the extra $942 or $1,000 thereabouts is the result of having to do this on a non-work day. Uh, and we will have to pay somebody to come in and, and, and mine the store, so to speak, while they're doing the work out there. But they, they say they can complete this entire transition in one day wow. and get the doors installed in that one day. They've already had their electrician come out and look at the individual electrical facilities out there in order to run the doors. Uh, and they're certain they can do this project. Well, they have to do it for the bid they submitted. Yeah. <laughs> they don't have a choice. So I so. need a motion to waive the purchasing policy 7183A, purchasing policy 7184, and purchasing policy 71851. Second. Motion by Regina, seconded by Mary Louise. All those in favor? I, I have a question yep. for Fred. Sure. It, what will happen if we stand in front of the door and say, open sesame? Okay. Um, it's not sound actuated. Oh. Okay. <laughs> so we have number three, the deliberative session location discussion. Ah. This gets to the interesting. Um, so there's probably going to be a big crowd. I'd suggest one of cut. Well, no. don't know whether there's going to be a big crowd or not. Oh. Um, the moderator is available Monday, August 6th. It's suggested the deliberative session be held here. In oh, this, my goodness. This room. Ooh. How, many, how many people does this room s hold? I believe that 125? 125 is on the, yeah. I'll make the motion that we have it at this room. Second, a discussion? If, I'll second it for discussion. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> if we have more than the required, we can always set chairs up upstairs. We have a TV upstairs. We can have a deputy moderator up there. Mm -hmm. And if somebody wants to speak, they can come down here and take the floor. In the 14 years I've been here, we've never had more than that. Never ever. had 100 people at a... Yeah, Not even of, close to it. We have more people here now than we what do in March. What day of the week, Fred, is that? It's Monday evening. It would be Monday. a Monday evening, yes. People aren't going to Well. I, I, we've never even had uh, over 100. Mm. Yeah, I can't ever remember 100 people. We've so. never had a meeting in the summertime before, though. The, the <laughs> permanent meeting, which would be the voting uh, meeting, we can hold at the, uh, the elementary school. Um, it has to be held the Friday preceding the 28th. Every other day that week, Monday through Thursday, is, is uh, in fact spoken for in the school because they're preparing to open. And the following Monday, which is the 28th, that's the opening day of school. That's just not going to work very well. This is wow. the, the advice of the moderator. I think he's got the knowledge to uh, give us a good well, recommendation. That's probably sensible. Oh, I agree. I guess, yeah. All right. So well, we have a motion. The second. If, if to let the so moderator up. select the site. Yep. He did decide. He did select it as he. Yes. He said, "Okay." So he's wow. sitting here. He's he's the one that does most of the stuff. Okay. He's got a pretty good handle on it. He does. So we have a motion, a second. All those in favor of the six. And having them here. Okay. Hmm. Very good. Well. That was easy. Aquarian DWSRF grant. Uh, we've asked Aquarian, and they've certainly consented. Um, we suggested to them that they apply to the state for funding for a uh, the PFAS treatment facility. And they are doing that. They're filing that by the 15th of this month. Uh, I believe we should support them in front of the state to see if they can get the funding for that. Uh, it's a substantial um, impact against the towns, and uh, our support may go to help uh, them get that grant, which would decrease the expenses to their water payers. I'll make a motion that we support them. Second. Second. Any questions? All those in favor? Unanimous. Hmm. Next thing we have is the Cable Renewal Committee appointments. I make a motion. Oh, oh go ahead. <laughs> Make a motion to uh, nominate Anna Carnaby and Nathan Page. Can we do them one by one. Can we do? Well, how I many are there supposed to be? There's supposed to be two. Two. Well, we have a motion. I'll second that motion. So, is there any other discussion? You want well, I mean, I was going to move. Uh, and Carnaby, certainly. But I have a different person that I was going to propose for uh, the second position. 
But we do have a motion and a second. Yeah. So all those in favor of Ann and Nathan? Those opposed? Four to one. So that's it. Uh, any other new business? The non union. Did we have the non the uh, part time? The wage adjustment. study? Yes. Yeah, the yeah. wage study? That, that I have listed. We have the not study, the recommendations. The recommendation. We have the Good evening. Town manager with us. Good evening. So I'm here to uh, report on what the board had instructed me to take a look at. And just for the public, um, as you recall, we had the wage study by MRI done for um, the non-union, uh, but it did not look at essentially our seasonal. All right, the, the summertime help that we have. Uh, many of these positions haven't been adjusted for many, many years. So I went out and looked at comparisons and what are the positions we're talking about. Um, summer camp counselors in the rec department who do um, the youth camp. Um, those are generally young folks that come in and work. Um, currently it's, it's uh, $10 an hour. I found that number to be within range. I recommend we, we increase it by 50 cents to 10.50 an hour. That stays consistent with some of the other camps. It's less than private, but in line with the other camps. Uh, how do you want to take these just as the, the global and talk about the we'll adjustments? We'll talk about a global and then yeah. if there's any other questions, questions the, we'll do that at great. the time. And then I've looked at, additionally, parking lot attendants, parking enforcement, part-time dispatch, the laborers and folks who work in the cemeteries and the recreation department, as well as the D DPW seasonal folks who augment our highway division, our rubbish collection, the help in the wastewater treatment plant, the beach parking crew and transfer station. Now, across most of these, what I found was, and again, we really focused on anything making, you know, from $16 and down and when adjustments have been made. Um, the range that I'm recommending we move these to is a low of 1050 and the highest is $17. 17 is for the supervisors of the grounds crews that work both in recreation and in the cemetery division. Um, and I mean, I, I think these ranges as I, I've gone through are on par. For example, parking lot attendants, uh, you know, it's a low pay. It was $11 initially. Recommend going up a little bit on that. And I tried to stay consistent with unskilled labor positions, what's the going rate for dishwashers and that type of thing in town. For the grounds crew folks, those who operate machinery, mowing the lawns, using the equipment, um, what are landscapers, private landscapers paying, what are we seeing jobs advertised for, and I use that as the guide I use to create this matrix for you. And, and again, the range on these all can be absorbed in the department budgets. I think the tightest one we'll have will be in recreation, but that still has sufficient to deal with in there. But the other departments can well handle all of these. Um, additionally, we're still looking for an, a, a person to augment in the building department. Um, they're running with two folks. Uh, we have a strong lead working on a, a very uh, qualified candidate now, um, and we'll be looking to fill that position at a, at a, a going rate that's uh, commensurate with that experience. So. I'd be happy to answer any questions the board has. And again, for the public, all of these, especially two of these individuals in the Recreation Department were included in the study. However, what I'm recommending is still substantially below what that recommends. And for the public, that is something that the board is still considering, taking no action on at this point in time, but hopefully you will uh, in the future. Mary Louise? Oh. Regina? So, I think you already answered my question. All these departments, police, cemetery, recreation, and public works, it won't have a budget effect. Correct. Yeah, I think these increases are definitely much needed. I well, I mean, I mean, to be clear, will it have an effect? Yes, it will increase wages, right, but, but it can be not, well handled within right, their exactly allotted much. line That's items. what I meant to say. Yes. yes. Jim. Thank you. Yeah, I just uh, I want to make a point that these are all the low-end people in, the, in our budget the low-end laborers positions. and stuff they're not get, and these are people who get no benefits mo right. mostly i mean they might get vacation a couple of them but there's only two that get some uh earned time based on their service time correct right. but all the others are non-benefited but i mean so i mean and i and and what we're paying them right now is well under what the, what the minimum wage is and also what the recommendations are is for, for four of them are still well under so i'm going to make an amendment and i'd, I'd like to make an amendment that we have the supervisor of recreation and cemetery go to eighteen dollars an hour rather than seventeen, and I'd like to make a recommendation that the equipment labor or those four of cemetery and recreation go to sixteen fifty. So I'd increase them by a dollar. 
and I think, and I don't think that's too much because if we look at the study that we had done, they recommended much higher for the supervisors, way up much higher. And I, yeah, the I, I supervisors think, were in the range of, I think, 2190 yeah. up to 26. Yeah, so, I mean, if we want to maintain people, good people who are doing a good job, I think we really have to step up to the plate. I think that we should go with what the town uh, assistant town manager did. He came to a, a conclusion. We discussed it earlier, and I think it should stay where it was. I agree. I agree with what Jim said, but I agree since we we have discussions. We could have of discussed it, this earlier. And we well, no, no. Wait, may I just? I don't want to interrupt. We should not have discussed this earlier because we want to discuss it in oh. public. So I want to step up to the plate in public. And I agree with what you're saying, but I also, I have a lot, I've already started going through this report, and I would like to, I mean, maybe, like you said, maybe we do have to hit these guys again. Because if you look on the minimum for our proposed 18 pay plan that was prepared by the municipal resources. It's $18 for the lowest. $18.25 for the lowest That's correct. Minimum. grade of pay or whatever you want That's to correct. call it. But that's why I was mindful of when we did this using the comparisons that I had and mindful that the board is going to come back to that study at some point. Right. Wanted to handle this as a phased manner, but still be reasonable. Yeah, it's low. Absolutely. I think I you agree. were reasonable. You did this and you're look, looking out for what the pat taxpayers expect. I, I was I, happy with what we discussed upstairs. I, I, my point is the minimum is 18. The, the, the best workers, he, the people that, that should be the highest on this place should be up at the minimum at least. That's my point. And I think it should not be discussed upstairs. It should be discussed down here in public. Well, I think I, I'm against it. Um, just, just as a point of reference, I would much rather hear low-end positions, yeah. not low-end people. Yes, yeah. I, I apologize Absolutely. for that. That was a terrible the statement. Lower-paid positions we have on our scale. Yes. Uh, yeah, because all of Terrible. these are valuable. Many of these folks do the same work and augment what our full-time folks right. do. Very valuable, picking up, you know, dealing with our trash, dealing with our labor. It's but very that, important. That, I meant work. to say, well, yeah, yep. understood. <laughs> my my Thank question you. to Slip you the tongue. <laughs> is, could they handle that dollar increase on those four people? Could those budgets? Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, from what we're already making, for example, on the cemetery one, it, it's already a jump. And there's some adjustments, <coughs> pardon me, in that budget that need to be made based on circumstances, but um, we can we can find that, yes. That additional dollar is not going to make a tremendous difference. All during a default difference. budget. The public is going to yeah. be outraged by well, some of these things. I then, mean, how many public, raises can we give? Then the public ought to start volunteering to work for some of these wages that we have. That's, uh, that's my concern. Yeah, it's I mean, a big increase. I think you should go over every one of the prices and say what they are. We, Right during this meeting, I want to hear them. Okay, maybe you do that. That's fine. And tell so, them how much of an increase each one. To, uh, yeah. Tell the actual dollar amount how much each one has increased. So on the summer camp counselors, I'm recommending a 50 cent per hour increase for the parking lot attendance, a dollar fifty increase for the parking enforcement folks. And yeah, now I got to do the math in my head. Um, it's approximately a three dollar increase. Part time dispatch, same thing. Laborers are going from 1150 to 1250 a dollar increase. The equipment operators were going from 1150 to 1550. The equipment operators in recreation from 1350 to 1550. Uh, the supervisor in recreation from 1663 to 17, and the cemetery supervisor from 13 to 17. Public Works, the beach picking crew from nine dollars to 1250. And I'm sorry to say the labor positions in the DPW, I don't have their starting rates, uh, but this puts them in line with the same rate of pay that the full-time laborers get, full-time get benefits, these guys don't, mm -hmm. doing the same job for the season. I don't have the, the differential on those. I think some of, I think these, some of the people deserve it. And, uh, you know, some of these things are approaching 30%. And I think that, you know, what happened about uh, people discussing about the, uh, about Social Security, you know, Hampton's a town with a lot of older people. I just, I don't know. I think that the, we're being over generous here. We're doing a lot of things. Uh, I, to me, I don't know. I, 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 the way, I'm against it. Okay, yeah. that's fine. The way I look at it is I'm looking at some of these people and without naming names. Uh, some of these people have been in the, their positions for a number of years with no increase. Correct. Some six, seven, eight years with and no, no increase and no benefits. 
They have part-time positions. Um, some of the people at uh, both the rec and the cemetery are very dedicated. They've been through a lot this year and, and are working very hard at that. I know last year when we, we tried to do some of the parking enforcement, we couldn't hire anybody to do it because the rate was so low. So we've got to actually be more consistent to and getting closer to it. Now, even with this, we're not at what the pace what your pay study says, but we're working towards it. And we got others that we have to work on that too over the next year. But I have no problem with the selectman um, Waddell's motion or amendment. And so we have a motion and a second. Is there all those in favor? All those opposed? Motion fails. So we'll go back to the main motion. Motion to. I'll make the motion to give this, and these people really deserve it. And I wish we could give everybody a big fat raise, but it's, you know, well, it's not, it is it's, what it is. It's not. We've worked hard to make it this way. We've spent the money on doing this study. I think the study was over generous, in my opinion, mm -hmm. but it's good that we can do this for these people tonight. Well, and I, I appreciate I, it. And, and I appreciate agree. them. I agree. I agree. And we appreciate all our employees, but uh, yes, I don't definitely. think it's been over generous. I think. Uh, it was, it was a more logical study. I but. think the study was over generous, not what we've done with the people. So, we have a motion. Second? Yeah, I just let. Go ahead. We have a second. You've got a motion no, first. I, don't I think got a motion. I'll second. Motion. I'll second. Yeah. Um, I just want to say I agree, and I also agree. I think that this whole, the whole organization needs to be assessed. And just because we're doing this now doesn't mean that we can reassess the, we can't reassess these guys later. So with this, this so. is you have with the study had an assessment done of the non-union folks. This is the remainder of the organization that's under your jurisdiction that we've now looked at the entire organization. The unions deal with union folks. All of those are under contract now. This is dealing with the folks that are seasonal employees and setting those rates. And all that's left for the board to decide as to what action, if any, you wish to take with the MRI study that's on the table. They're not asking you tonight, but that's left there for you to deal with. Okay. So we have a motion and second. All those in favor? Unanimous. Thank, Thank you. you. Anything else in our new business? I have one thing here. We have a, a late um, <laughs> permit for a closure of a public road. This is from uh, Falcone Circle on St. Sia Street. It's a neighborhood block party. I guess they've done this a number of years, <laughs> yeah. and they didn't get it in in time. <laughs> so this is for is there a date? Uh, yeah, 616 before our next meeting. Yeah. Before our next meeting at, at from 3 <clears> to 5 p.m. <throat> so I'm, I'll, I'll make a motion that we accept this I'll pending approval of department heads i'll second it yeah because it's not something that we want to do this all the time no but right. it, it, so the department heads will get this tomorrow and if they approve it then it, it'll be okay and it's not a new policy and it's not a new policy all those in favor unanimous so don't get to sign this one put it <laughs> any other new business do we sign that yeah. yes any other new business motion adjourn would be in order i make a motion to adjourn at uh 901. Second. Second. All those in favor? Unanimous. Thank you very much, Channel 22.